Our top story this lunchtime, North Korea has just closed down all communication channels with South Korea. The regime had set a deadline of noon today, which is now. It also said it will be considering South Korea as its, quote, enemy from this day forth. For more, let's connect to our Oh Jung-hee, who it joins us from Seoul's Unification Ministry. jung this is a serious escalation. Mark, Pyongyang's Korean Central News Agency reported this morning that as of noon Tuesday, that's as you've mentioned right now as we speak, it'll shut down all the inter-Korean hotlines at the Joint Liaison Office, the ones between the militaries and the one it has directly with Seoul's presidential office. Pyongyang explained that this is only the first stage of its actions to get rid of its, uh, quote, unnecessary contact points with the South. It added that the decision has been made by Kim yong tar who used to be the North's top nuclear Envoy until the second North Korea-U.S. summit in Hanoi in Kim Yo-jong, Kim Jong-un's sister. They stress that the regime's work towards South Korea will be turned into work towards an enemy. The action comes as the North has been blaming Seoul for failing to stop defectors from sending anti-Pyongyang propaganda leaflets across the border. Kim Jong-un's sister, Kim Yo-jong, and the regime's United Front Department, which is in charge of inter-Korean relations, both issued statements last week to say that the flying of the these leaflets goes against inter-Korean agreements and the South Korean government will be held responsible. And jung -hee, are we hearing any response from the South Korean government as of yet? Establishing the Joint Liaison Office and setting up this direct hotline between President Moon Jae-in and Kim Jong-un were just some of the ambitious steps the two Koreas took just a couple of years ago. Right, Mark. Well, this morning, Seoul tried communicating with the North using all the hotlines it has, including the ones at the Joint Liaison Office and the ones between the militaries, but the North did not respond. Seoul's Unification Ministry emphasized that the hotlines will have to be maintained as they are the basic tools for communication and stressed Seoul will abide by inter-Korean agreements. The ministry says the North did not send any other document to notify the South of its recent move. Seoul says it will see how things will unfold this afternoon and come up with how it should respond. Regarding the North's defining of Seoul as an enemy, the government did not have anything to say. That's all I have for now. Back to you.